Hello, we're back. We're back with episode 12 yeah. uh, of the Cultural Media mm-hmm. Podcast. I am James, Fionn is here, and we welcome our special guest for today's episode, Stefan Bialik, everybody. Woo! Right Thank <laughs> you so much for, uh, for joining us, Stefan. Uh, Bolton yeah. fan. Uh, I suppose the first question I have to ask, Ivan Campo, help or hindrance? Help or hindrance to what? The club. Massive help, no? He's, he's, <laughs> he's a fantastic cheerleader. He genuinely loves the club still. You know, he comes out of his way to still be involved in club stuff. He's a, he's a club legend. Confused by the question. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Uh, like, <laughs> terrible, players terrible. from that era. A terrible opening question, Jen. Shocking. I don't know. It sounded... <laughs> you, one of your best players ever. Yeah, what do you no, think of him? Undisputed. <laughs> best undisputed. I think people, you know, anyone who's been, well, obviously not many people are alive who saw the last out there before now. But, um, yeah, I don't think anyone would dispute he's one of the most beloved players at the club. Uh, well... <laughs> It, it, you've been a great guest, Stefan. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> There's been some. Um, well, it's like that big, that big Sam team was obviously the. Um, well, yeah, we're building. This is the uh, Polish football special. We're going to start with Bolton, obviously. <laughs> that is um, an interesting one. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, because we're the so only like, ones who like it. it. <laughs> he still lives in Bolton, doesn't he? Does he? Like, after all, like even when he. I... Managing Newcastle and that, he was. <laughs> no, no. He still, but apparently, he still lives in. Um, he still lives in. Uh, he like he still lived in Bolton when he was managing Newcastle. Probably not the town itself, but like somewhere nice just outside. Oh, yeah. No, Bromley Cross or something. You know, somewhere nice. Somewhere <laughs> yeah, nice that votes conser- a conservative stronghold <laughs> of Bolton. But then, oh, now, but, uh, Ives was, Ives is still sort of the. Uh, the, the sort of way the figure of the club, I think. He's uh, no, no, none of the other clubs he's managed since seem to have any fond thoughts about him. West Ham fans hate him, Newcastle fans hate him. Um, mm. But yeah, obviously there was his England uh, debacle, but he still thought very fondly of Bolton, I think, even after kind of leaving. 100% win record, though. No one will ever beat that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Whilst also caught on camera drinking a pint of wine. No, um, no. I reckon I've got a conspiracy theory. I reckon it was a spritzer, and that's a perfectly acceptable drink to have in pint form. <laughs> so you get like a 300, 350 measure of wine, a couple of ice cubes, and some soda, and you, you got a nice pint there. I just can't picture Sam Allardyce as a spritzer, man. No, it was hot, day. It's just, a, it's just a, yeah, just a sprit, a gravy spritzer, perhaps, but not, a, not a white wine. One. We all need to get, we all need to get the day kicked off somehow. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, it was just the, like, the open corruption, wasn't it? Where it's like, oh well. Oh, I can say, I, but what I like is like the thing he sort of does the thing everyone does when they're trying to brag to someone to impress you. Ah, oh, I can sort of that for you. No problem. Yeah, he was just yeah. stupid. And uh, the open corruption thing, I mean, obviously, I don't want to accuse anyone of anything, but uh, play, uh, managers having their players who followed them around was just a 90s, 80s thing, wasn't it? Like, it happened for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he was just sort of the last of the generation who was still doing that. Yeah. Unfortunately, he was trying to do it as England manager. <laughs> yeah, trying to sign Nico Cranshaw for the England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you still call them? Um, do you still call? Uh, do you still call it the Reebok Stadium? Well, me personally, um, in my head, it's the Reebok because I don't. You know, I used to live local, and now I don't. So, uh, like a lot of things with football, it's kind of there's no point in time when I was still yes. around and. Uh, well, plus it keeps changing now. I sound about eighty years old, but I, I honestly can't keep up with uh, with, with, with the names as it goes because I've not I've not managed to go in about four years because I've not been in that part of England since then. So yeah. Well, if you ever 
if you ever venture to the, the Tough Sheet Stadium. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that, that's that's Bolton's last name now, the Tough Sheet. Yeah, fairly, yeah, I did know that. Yeah, that, 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 that was sort of something I had and was horrified by and then put out of my head. It was still the Uniball in my mind. Uh, oh, yeah, the universe. The, uh, I like Bolton's Ground just because it's like, it's one of them shit soulless, it's shit soulless uh, retail part ones, new oh, ones. Oh, right, okay, yeah. That, like, that manages, but it's still, it, I don't know, there's something about there's something about being able to see the TK, when you walk out of TK Max, being able to see the ground. Well, you know I mean? yes, <laughs> it's in a shit retail park, but in a really quite pretty retail park. Because it's just mm. at the foot of like Winter Hill, and um, uh, oh yeah, so you've got like quite nice scenery from wherever you sit in the stadium. These big hills kind of looming mm. over you in the, in the semi dark as the floodlights come on. It's quite a, it's quite an atmospheric stadium despite the surroundings. Mm. We're talking your Bensons for beds. We're talking your pets at home. <laughs> I mean, yes, who knows, but, um, yeah. you know, it's got to be somewhere, yeah. right? dare, dare, dare I say... Uh, Where's I'm your honest. carpet, right? Where's your carpet, right? <laughs> and to give you a nice little segue, I will take Bolton Stadium and its location and its railway station right outside it over Reading's a thousand times. Oh, yeah. which a, I've never been to, never been to Reading's Ground. I've been to Reading, which was like, it was like it was a Friday night, and it was a, it was like full of students, and it was like I don't know, the last days of Rome, I, and Reading Town Reading, Centre. Reading Town it was Center. just a, it was an odd place. Yeah, the the pedestrianised bit around the town hall. I used to work there um, in an O'Neill's, and um, I had. I had, an ex, I had an ex who was from uh, quite a rough bit of London, and she came up to visit once and said, like, this is the most dangerous feeling place I've ever been in my life. <laughs> There's just this menace in the air. Like, I don't know what it is, because Reading's like one of those, you know what it's like when you get the biggest town for a while in any direction? All the lads, yeah. for, all the big lads from the satellite towns all come into the big town on a Friday, Saturday night to treat themselves. So oh, yeah. it's got that air, constant air of danger and menace. I mean, it's a, it, it's quite a dull place, Reading, in a lot of ways, but it, it does feel quite unpleasant. <laughs> you worked at, uh, you worked at Reading FC? No, I worked at, a hotel attached to the stadium. Okay. Uh, first question: Have you met Dave? Have you met Dave Kitson? <laughs> I didn't met Dave Kitson. No. Um, okay. I, we didn't meet many because the hotel was owned by a chain company. Um, I'm not right. sure what I'm not sure what the status of the hotel is at the minute. I think it might even be closed. Um, and as the club is going through its tribulations, but. Um, the only person I met, the only like famous person I met, and or it's quite a good post, it's uh, uh, Royston Trenter. Oh, yeah, wow, <laughs> it was at that time Royston when they Trenter. signed in, and he was a riot. All the other staff hated him, but if you just you know, you work in a hotel, most of the people who you deal with are arseholes who were pissed off or something. At mm. least Royston was just an arrogant man. And if you just sort of yeah. played his game and treated him like a big man, he liked you. But... Was he documented bringing in prostitutes to uh, Goodison Park? Uh, I, I, obviously, was... yeah. I can't talk about that no, because I don't know. <laughs> um, so I do know is that he was billeted in the hotel, and billeted is the right word, but he's back in the hotel attached to the plot, attached to the ground, um, because he wasn't expected to be there longer than a season, and indeed he wasn't. Um, in the first two weeks, he had all his family there, like aunties and all these, all these, you know, Dutch Surinamese people come over um, to help him settle down, and he was a really good boy then. Um, well behaved, you know, polite, all of that. And then 
after the first couple of weeks, they left and some tall blonde women arrived instead. And uh, then his behaviour started <laughs> changing. He told me because I was a concierge and he came up to me once and asked, could I help him book a, or could I help him rent a Humvee to drive to London with? <laughs> I was trying to, now, so I had to call up a rental company and find, first of all, find a luxury car rental place and say, I've got a client who's uh, a foreign national, EU, but foreign national, uh, 24 years old and doesn't have a fixed address in the UK. Are you able to rent a car to him? <laughs> <laughs> so, what what you described there like, kind of sounds like it, like, Royston Drenthe is a fresher at uni. His parents have dropped him off. They've stayed with him for a bit. <laughs> then all of a sudden, there's these girls back in his room. I mean, it's like a really off. shit, a much really is. shit American, American Drenthe. <laughs> <laughs> my um, my friend asked him for an autograph once, and he pretended to be on his phone. Um, <laughs> oh, actually, oh, that's a, that, John Walters in Liverpool City Centre once when I was doing charity fucking shite. To, Can you sign up for this, please? Um, that I did for like two weeks. Then the overwhelming sense of rejection nearly made me uh, want to take a toaster to the bath. So I stopped. Um, but I, I, um, I remember, I remember walking. Uh, I remember doing it, and we went, "Sure, that's John Walters." And he looked at the clock to me and went, absolutely panicked, and went. Hello? Yeah, so, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was really funny. To speak of, to speak of him, like, I mean, you said that it'd be like him going to uni. Um, yes, but that, that's, a, that's a problem, isn't it? Because when you're dropped off at uni by your parents, I know 18, 24, there's not a huge difference, but, you know, he's a young man at the heart of it, you know, okay, pissed a lot away and all of this, but, and in the end, he's probably only got himself to blame. But he's, you know, a young man who was away from his family in Spain, in Madrid. And I don't know how many, but, you know, obviously this is Real Madrid, so I imagine they have the resources to do it, but I don't know if they have the, if they have the then structure to really look after someone like that, you know? There is a kind of, a, a care, a duty of care thing. Um, and I think that's one of the things Allardyce did really well. Um, this Institute of Bolton, actual structures and a family, like everyone knew each other at the club, like all the bathroom stuff down to the team ladies and cliches and stuff. But genuinely, mm. they had that structure going on. And Reading at that time, it was when they'd just been bought out by a, uh, a wood pulp oligarch. And they had, um, well, it was, I think, Brian McDermott and then Nigel Adkins as manager across the time I was oh, yeah. there. Um, what's Nigel Adkins doing now? Is he back from somewhere? He, he's manager of Tranny Rovers. Oh, is he? Oh, is he really? I was just going to Google that. That seems to be. I don't yeah. know if that's a fall down or not. He had, his, his star was huge at one point, wasn't it? When he was, yeah, he was massive at, massive at Southampton, but yeah, it was, yeah, he did really, he did really well. Then dropped off the face of the earth. Do you remember Brian McDermott as well? Only ever managed Reading and like Leeds, yeah. I think. Mean, just think, yeah, 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 yeah. like Mr. Honeydew off the Muppets. But he was, he, he also managed <laughs> Slough Town, I think. Um, he, he's a he was scout at Arsenal for ages. I think that was his that's his longest post playing job, but yeah. He's a nice man anyway, who was in a difficult situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck to uh good luck to the Royals. Um not the Royals, uh, but the Royals of uh of Reading, fingers crossed. If I could touch upon them, um, Bolton, we did did you um did you attend any of the UEFA Cup UEFA Cup games that they were in, you know, the uh, oh. sort of the sort of sort of the mid forties? The UEFA Cup games. Oh, uh, Bolton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I was at the Atletico home game. I don't even remember the result. It might have been 2 2. But, um, you know, it was sort of the uh, it, it incredible night and also this sense that 
this is all going to go away quite soon and then it will never be yeah. like this ever again. It was a fear throughout all of that time. Um, just in the back of your mind, there was like, this is billion. And we're really lucky. Oh, well, I'm personally really lucky to be in my early 20s at this time. Um, and then, but it is going to go away soon. So when it did finally collapse, it was more like, well, it took so long to happen. It was, yeah. it, it was like, we're fucked. We're gonna go. Can I? I can't swear. By the way. Can I? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> you know, just like we're fucked, we're going down. Um, let's just get on with it. But instead, we just had like what felt like about a decade of Gary Megson. And <laughs> <laughs> I took someone on a date to a Gary Megson game. <laughs> It was oh, Fulham versus Fulham versus Bolton, and I think she was an Arsenal fan. But um, so she was into football. Do you not you want know. to come and see Thomas Radzinski? Come on. He might even have scored. <laughs> you know, but it was uh, oh. it was that's what I do remember. It was Fulham two, Bolton one, and it was not even the end of the Mexican years. It was about six months in, and already. One of ours managed because you know Fulham had the neutral section when they yeah. have like the, they have a neutral section at Fulham when they have smaller away teams visiting, which or smaller smaller games where the away fans aren't going to be so numerous. Half the away stand is given to you know just anyone who's a tourist and wants to go to a game. It's a good idea for a little club in London. Um, yeah, in London, yeah. But, I wouldn't get away with that in like I don't know Swindon. Yeah, it'd be weird. <laughs> but, <laughs> one of ours has managed to because it's not segregated one of ours managed to end up in a fight with a neutral I remember that that was the only <laughs> interesting thing about it um, uh, fighting neutrals that's funny but, yeah, I can't I can't remember which team you support James but Phil have you seen a, I can't remember if you, you supported a Mexican team does he have a manager no with, Middlesbrough we've, we've had we've had We've come as close as it's possible to get to Megson without Megson Strachan, but um, yeah, uh, no, not Megs, not. I don't know if this is offensive, but Middlesbrough feel like Gary Megson. But... Yeah, no, no, no. What you mean? I've like, he's, he's like, a, he's a, we've had, we've had, we've had shit ginger managers who nearly took us down. Gordon Strachan being the the main one. It well, did the feel like one. that. I did feel like that a lot in the Premier League towards the mid to late noughties where a team would come up and be like, oh, okay. And then they'd, they'd do really well for a season and then they'd be handed off the sort of the, the rotation of Pardew, Kerbishley. Peter uh, Reed, for... unfortunately, who was a nice man, but yeah. was never great at managing. Yeah. I do remember mm. like a sort of circle of of just sort of awful managers who'd be just permanently in the job centre. I remember yeah. I met Jonathan Pearce. Well, I met that. Jonathan Pearce once. Oh, sorry, mate. Go on. No, I, sorry, met John, I, met, I met Jonathan Pearce. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I met Jonathan Pearce at uh, Piccadilly Station, and it was when we were being managed by Pulis, and uh, it was like in the depths of... Uh, it was a big Pulis out time. And he said, he asked me what I thought of Tony Pulis, and I played it like, well, yeah, this man works for the BBC, he doesn't like strong opinions. Um, so, so I just said, um, oh, yeah, oh, no, he's all right, he's doing that. And then, oh, yeah, we're good family friends. I was all well, I got away with one there. So, yeah. Pulis would hey, be uh, the one I was thinking of. Yeah. I think I was confused with him with Nixon. Uh, I, wish, uh, uh, yeah. I wish Jonathan Pierce would ask me my opinion on Hypnodisc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I was, I was absolutely gutted when I've I like, got on the uh, like got got a picture with Big JP. Got on got on the Met, and it's, as the Met's pulling away, like, as his Met was pulling away, um, I just thought, oh fuck, Robot Wars. We got to ask you about <laughs> Robot Wars. I'm in Poland. There's at least two people who are Big JP, so I was confused when you when you switched to Big JP no. there. <laughs> no, who are the big who are the big Polish JPs? So. <laughs> There's, there's JP1, uh, Josef Pilsudski, the ah. post war or the interwar leader. And there's oh. uh, <laughs> John Paul II. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. 
JP two. Same Pope, yeah. <laughs> as a as a segue to um not sure how long this will last, but we'll go on to we'll go from Pole we'll go from Bolton from Reading to Gregor Zraziak to Poland. Well there you go. That's actually call us both. At that Fulham game, one of the reasons I went to that one particularly was because we just signed uh, Ebi Smolarek on loan from oh yeah, I think from South, I think from something there, and that was one of the last of the you know that that was one of the sort of last desperate part of the Bolton Premier League days where we signed this kind of on his way down but still kind of handy striker um, from. Central Europe, but he spent the whole game just sort of sadly warming up right in the corner by the cottage. And yeah, uh, yeah. maybe he'll come on five minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there, there's your there's your Poland link from Bolton. We did have Rashek as well. I remember, I remember, uh, I remember, uh, mate, because yeah. I wanted to see, I loved, I always loved Carnu as a kid. So when Portsmouth played a uh, Portsmouth played Bolton. I made him take me to made him take me just to watch Carney didn't play. Carl came on for like three minutes at the end. I saw uh, Jack, I saw uh, Jigo Shrasher score off his arse once. He yeah, he played. Uh, he's no, sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah. His nickname in Poland was um, like Dredd, like Dredd means wood, and you know, Eno like a Brazilian shirt name ended. But um, mm. <laughs> yeah, one of the most. Four strikers I've ever seen, and I've ever seen as a certain Bolton fan. <laughs> yeah, up there with the Almanders of the world. Yo, Almander. Yes, the cock. Wow. Still one of the best guys <laughs> any of us have ever seen. And then just yeah, against Wolves. Wolves. Unbelievable. <laughs> he was some. It was like it was like it was like a Andre P- Pierre Gignac. I would say. Like a, just yeah. a big lad who look a big lad who looks like he should be on a building site and looks like he shouldn't be able to move his feet within without the turning circle of Jupiter. Yeah, can I know I'm on to talk there, but anyway. He's ba- he's banging him in for a Tigres Gignac, isn't he? He's been there for Oh like no, he's a, he's a club legend. Yeah, he's like for, yeah. for three hundred goals or something. For, but uh, no, but, no, but I mean just the look of him. Gignac yeah. looks like he should be like a, a, a misogynistic Frenchman on a building site. <laughs> <laughs> Just as that air of yeah, I know. <laughs> Drinking wine and going, we, oui, madame, at, uh, on a building site in Lyon or something. Yeah, anyway. Is that what they say? Um, <laughs> yes, this <laughs> is. Oui, madame. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not familiar with uh, French builder lingo, to be fair. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I, I, also, I also, my two other Polish players that I uh, prepared... Uh, these are more football manager and uh, stuff uh, heroes of mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, now this, uh, then we'll ask you to pronounce this for me uh, in a minute, Stefan, because it is a very hard name, and I've probably been saying it wrong for about ten years. Casper, easy enough. Zbilko, I think. P R Z Y B Y L K O. But L with a L with a. Yeah, a Zbilko one. Ah, oh, no, that's that's not Zbilko. Oh, no. Like like Zbilko. Well, there we go. He's a, but yeah, he's a, he's a, he's another uh, six foot four big lad. You have to have a big, you have to have a big lad on um, up top for me. That's my yep. philosophy. No smaller than six foot two. You're not getting. You're not. My, you're not my striker if you're not six. Uh, Kevin Davis was only six foot one. I know, but he could jump. Kevin Davis doesn't count because he could jump like LeBron James. So which is because he gets Yeah, he just. Uh, uh, Oosh, oosh. Yeah, yeah. Um, we should put out on social media like, can you do a, a big man, big eleven? But all the starting eleven should be big men strikers. Yeah, yeah just all, yeah, just let Ferdinand in net. Yeah, Nikola Zigic. Yeah, noted striker David Jones in there, surely. Oh yeah, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, you kept, that was against that was against Borough that as well when they needed a goal. They had imagine being, imagine being John Macken, right? You're a striker. <laughs> you're no. a striker. You're on the bench. You need a goal to qualify for Europe in five minutes. Your manager turns to the bench. You go right. I'm getting my tracksuit off here. So let's go. He goes, David, <laughs> get up to. 
<laughs> he's almost like an inch or two taller than John Macken as well. John Macken's yeah. an actual striker. My thing with that is like all of those things where you just ask yourself, okay, so this must have been planned. You know, you don't just mm. decide that on the day. They must have done it in training. It must have been discussed. And nobody involved with all, any of that decision making said, it's not a good idea. It's not, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. No. But uh, it's imagine, just imagine that. Stuart Pierce as well, wouldn't it? Like, yeah. The you say things like, man, like, like Stuart Pierce. Yeah, but uh, hardly, <laughs> hardly thought of as like a great tactical innovator in management, was he? Well, I don't yeah. think he did. He have a job after that? Did he get another job after that? I think he did. Maybe manage to win another twenty-one to rugby. England, something yeah. England. Yeah, because yeah, the, 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 the FA went. We know who we need to nurture our new talent. The fellow who puts strikers up top. Put goalkeepers okay. up top, even. Most recently, not that, been coach the time. Time. You'd, obviously, you'd... you'd obviously done what everyone did as a kid when they played FIFA and gone, do you know what I'd really like to do? I used to, I used to put Michael Owen in goal just to see what... Uh, on FIFA just 2000. To see what FIFA 2000, you'd put Michael Owen in goal. He was West Ham assistant until last year, apparently. Stuart yeah. Pierce. What? Yeah, yeah. He was well, for a year in 2017, and then from 2020 to 2022, and he did manage manage Forest for a year as well. He was in a music video last year for the Stranglers. Oh, the Stranglers were doing records last year. Yeah, yeah no. uh, so what what's going on with the world? So, what did you want to know about Poland? Well, so we keep segueing across to Poland without actually without oh, actually yeah, getting without, there. Without actually, we're sort of on the verge without of actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, but like Ryan, uh, take me from this land of uh, tradition, take me into, <laughs> into tell, us, tell us more about David Weeter. No, um, <laughs> I am um, uh, David Weeter. David Weeter's a bomb. Yeah, that's probably... <laughs> right? No, I could... he didn't have him headbutt in an ice block, like after he retired. The... That he's one of one of the stupidest men in the world, definitely. But he's, he seems lo- he seems lovely. Yeah. But he's like he is one of them. Like, but the scene about the vaccine, like, so how can that be? So you know, he's one of them. Oh, sorry, you go, you go. Stefan. He was quite, it was quite shabbily treated by circumstances at the end of his time at Bolton as well. Just that he, uh, um, he was desperate to stay at the club after he got his long-term injury and was going to take, like, he was going to earn about, where did he end up, Wigan? Wait, or, I don't Oldham, know, I thought Oldham. he said, I think it was oh, Oldham. he ended up Oldham, Oldham. Oldham. Um, but Oldham paid him more, a, a significant amount more than Bolton were going into. And he still wanted to stay oh. at Bolton, but Bolton just couldn't come up with the money to pay him because that was when things were really, really looking like we might not have a club in a year or two. So, yeah, Winter oh, yeah. seems a well, good well, one. And now Oldham, and now Oldham don't I, I, either. Now no. Old, Oldham are in the, you know, Oldham have done the, uh, let's spend loads of money in League One and then end up in the conference. Yeah. I always have the perfect headline if uh, David Wheater got caught in a match-fixing scandal. Wheater fix. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> it prints it, it writes itself. Um, so, well, yeah. right. <laughs> so, David Viteric. No, anyway. Um, he, that's 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 how Serbian, man. Yeah, it does. I'm say. <laughs> Vite- no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna carry on with that. But yeah, so I know that you're a cracker. Well, actually, we'll talk about this first, seeing as, seeing as I've got it on the uh, well, the I'm game we the went to together. Yeah. Third yeah, game, no, but that 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 the you know in terms of like you know you see all these uh, fo- football uh, eating what what foods the best at fo- there will never be there will never be a better than better than Garvanya Krakow than some fella with a big fuck off load of sausages, unbelievable. Yeah, it's sausage to crowd ratio because there can't be more than about 200, 250 people at the game. There's like a sausage for three, 
every fifth or sixth person. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and we had, to, we had to walk around that. Uh, it was like a big university campus they play on, isn't it? Or that was that, like that, a that's high school state. Oh, is it? Oh, right. Just a horrible it, like, um, housing estate. We walk, we walk around it, and I'd like we got to the, we got to the thing, didn't we? Where it's, we got to the gate, and then there was like, can we come through here? And they were like, no, you have to walk two miles <laughs> that way, <laughs> all the way around. That was, uh, that was not, not pleasant. Um, but yeah, uh, but I, I know you're a bit, you, Jay. We got there in the end. But James, what James has a has, has a habit of doing, Stefan, um, is picking. Um, Outright fascist football clubs to follow. This is by not accident. true. This is not <laughs> true. I totally I, by accident. Like, totally I not made, made, your I made, oh, I well, made no, yeah, well, the mistake well. with hearts. I made the mistake with hearts. I made the mistake with uh, hearts. Hearts, hearts is not hearts is not, but what hearts is not Vistler, James, which is what you went. Oh, Vistler, cra- I'll have Vistler crack off for me because I oh. used to play as them a lot on FIFA. <laughs> well, when I came, I, I'm you know I'm in an odd position because I don't have any family history in Krakow. My family weren't from here. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I was just a medium senior, so I had a thousand of clubs to follow. Um, I kind of happened upon Krakowia just because they were lower in the league, but then. I started going along and looked into the history and uh, this one with the police team. So, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the police, the militia, as they were, the militia during communism, because they were maybe called militia, not police. And they still have uh, quite deep links within the city. Allegedly, they have links to... Um, you know, curators within the city, uh, lawyers, police, all the all the sort of um, law enforcement infrastructure of the city is still sort of involved with the club to some extent. Is it? Is, am I right in saying is is it visible that Jakub Plaszczykowski uh, owns a stake in? Yeah. So, in the last few years, they so. Back in when you were playing as a uh, football manager, they were the the team in Poland. They won every single year for nearly a decade. Um, I think mm. it was seven in a row, something like that. Um, they did this partly because basically Polish football is chaotic. If you are well organized, if you have proper infrastructure behind you, then you will do well. You see, and then, then I mean, we've got a back of Chelsea Hall, and now we were doing really well in Europe um, for a Polish team. You know, I think they got a draw with Sporting, something like that. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, all of that is despite the fact that Legia have been in the Champions League in, in recent years, so should I really have a budget far in excess of anyone else? But I don't know where it goes with them. Um, but, this one had the backing of a, a billionaire um, who just had money to spend. He was a uh, well, it's not in, not important or interesting what industry he was in, but he had money to throw at the club, build them up like that, and just gave them a bank rolled them to be um, both the academy for most of South Poland. So there was a conveyor belt of talent, um, but also just the money to pay higher wages. He, no, well, it, it wasn't publicly said what happened with him, but he decided he was going to step back. You know, I'm talking about he's old, but um, he decided he was going to step back about five or six years ago. I think more than that now. And there was then a long, drawn out period where no one was really sure what was happening. Um, the club had buyer who turned out to be a complete fraud like to the point where he uh, you know he'd lied about absolutely everything even his high school diploma um, no. you know um, and that all fell through there's rumors now um but 
basically because it fell through Polish football like most European football these were classical football team are part or were part of a bigger sports club um, they got separated off from the sports club when they were a very successful football team because you know it was easier to manage that way the 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 Basketball team attached them. Yeah, I mean, they, but because this buyout fell through, the sports club took them back over. Now, the sports club, in the interim period after the football club was was uh, separated off from it, became controlled by, we can say ultras, we can say hooligans, but by, let's say, hardcore fans of the club. Um, now, what they proceeded to do after regaining control of the football club was asset strip, and it sounds like yeah. right? the fans got hold of the yeah, club, and passage. then he <laughs> went to his knees. Um, so there was another fake buyer who who hung around for about six months. Before eventually, yeah, Kuba just sort of came back with a big bag of money from Germany and said, here, I'll take charge, um, I'll play a half a season. And he, yeah, he rescued them. So definitely, definitely their club legend who can do no wrong now. No. They are, I mean, I say rest of them, they are now a mid table second division team. So, hello, uh, James here from the Cultures Pod. Uh, just to let you know that we did experience some technical difficulties around the 40 minute mark when recording with Stefan. Um, so this episode uh, was cut short slightly, um, but we are going to get Stefan back on because um, his insight. And uh, opinions on Polish football uh, were phenomenal, and uh, we really love talking to him. So we're going to get Stefan back on. So it's a bit short this week. Uh, next week, normal service will resume. Uh, you can follow Stefan uh, on Twitter, Stefan Bielek, uh, and you can follow us on Twitter at Cultures Pod and at Cultures Pod on Instagram. So yeah, normal service uh, shall resume.